For more on this, Nader Hashemi joins me from Doha. He is a director at the Center for Middle East Studies at the University of Denver. Thank you for joining us on the program. What message is Trump sending by sending troops into Saudi Arabia? Is this a show of force to Iran or is this a message that he is willing to support Saudi Arabia and confront Iran if it comes to that? Well, I think it's both, but I think it's primarily an attempt to calm the Saudis down. They are in full panic mode now because for the second time, Trump has refused to strike Iran. And the Saudis, uh, I think, had calculated right from the beginning of Trump's election that um, he was uh, uh, as obsessed with Iran as um, the House of Saud was. And they were hoping that um, this process that Trump began um, in May of 2018, pulling out of the Iran nuclear accord and then putting crippling sanctions on Iran would be a policy and a trajectory that the United States would follow to completion. In other words, to try and really squeeze Iran, uh, not just economically, but militarily. So I think these recent moves, the troop deployments, the announcement of new sanctions, the sending of new Patriot missiles to Saudi Arabia are primarily and fundamentally uh, directed toward um, uh, reassuring the House of Saud that uh, the that the the American um, alliance with uh, with Saudi Arabia is still intact and uh, and 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 the Saudis need not panic the way that they are panicking. Mm -hmm. But do you think that the move is strong enough in response to the recent strikes on the uh, Saudi oil facilities? Well, it depends on who you ask. Um, from the Saudi perspective, absolutely not. Uh, Saudi Arabia, as you said, as, as you just showed in the in the clip before our discussion, uh, is interpreting this as an attack on the entire world, and um, they want a military response. And I think Trump has sent a message that if Saudi Arabia wants to attack Iran militarily, they're on their own. That is not uh, the decision that Trump has made yet, and he may not make it. And he's been pretty clear in his comments. Um, that he still has time, there's no urgency. Um, and in, in the press conference on um, the other day by the uh, Defense Secretary of the United States and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, it was pretty clear that there's no immediate decision to uh, respond militarily. So the Saudis are upset. I think the Iranians are concerned about what might happen next. And I think we're in a waiting game. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens after the UN General Assembly meeting of the heads of state. Right. Uh, Iran has said that it's ready to destroy any country that launches an attack on its territory and will respond to any aggression. So some very strong words there from Iran. But do you think that on some level Iran is a bit relieved um, given this level of deployment, which is rather small? I think that they are. I think um, there's concern. There always has been concern that um, this conflict could escalate. Uh, but I think Iran has calculated that Trump has made a decision that he does not want to go to war. Um, he's concerned about his re-election. So I think uh, right now it looks like Tehran has actually called Washington, D.C.'s bluff. Trump has been talking very tough on Iran for about a year and a half now, um, but he seems very reluctant to take it to the next level. So I think the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the ruling elite in Iran that makes these types of decisions are confident where they stand right now. Ultimately, they're suffering under sanctions, but I think they can, uh, they're hoping to wait, wait out this process and um, hoping that the United States will, will capitulate in some way or form to the, uh, to the position that the Iranians have taken. All right. Nader Hashemi joining us from Doha. Thank you.